In August of 2020, the Russian government released a classified video from the Cold War era. Grainy footage shows a flight crew and their bomber flying through blue skies. An officer with a ticking clock gives the order, and the plane drops a white parachute. It looks tiny in the distance, but this parachute is carrying Tsar Bomba, the most destructive device ever created. Its explosion is 3,000 times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Japan during World War II, and sends a dust cloud 42 miles into the sky, so high it could be seen from space. The blast, which originated on the Russian island of Severny, obliterated everything in a 20-mile radius. Its shockwaves spanned 400 miles, and as far as Norway, windows were shattered. Luckily, a device like this was never used in a populated area, but it nearly was. What the Russian government kept secret for years was that in 1983, a single glitch brought them within minutes of unleashing their nuclear missiles on the U.S. And this is the story of the unlikely hero at the center of it. Welcome to the very first episode of Strange Archives, a series where we uncover the strangest events that shaped history and changed our world. I'm your host, Charlie Garcia. The small, top-secret military base nestled in a remote region of Russia was unknown to most in the Soviet military, let alone any Americans. On Monday, September 26, 1983, Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov walked into the early warning defense center at the heart of the base, early for his 12-hour shift. Petrov was born in 1939, the year World War II broke out. His father was a pilot who spent the war fighting in the skies over Europe, and his mother a nurse. At the age of 17, with a strong push from his parents, he decided to join the Soviet Air Force. Petrov was brilliant and quickly rose through the ranks, eventually becoming a senior officer tasked with a very important mission. He and his team were monitoring a group of satellites flying 50,000 feet over the Earth, with their gaze fixed directly on the United States. Russian intelligence was keenly aware of the sites where the U.S. military held their nuclear missiles, and they made sure to watch these around the clock, alert and ready to respond at a moment's notice. The world was in the midst of a Cold War, an ideological clash of civilizations that led to a massive buildup of arms and power between the U.S. and Soviet Union. These two giants had built up enough destructive capacity to annihilate the world a thousand times over. And by 1983, the tensions that had been building for over 30 years were coming to a dangerous head. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. I would rather see my little girls die now than have them grow up under communism and one day die no longer believing in God. President Ronald Reagan had changed the tone of the Cold War through a massive increase in military spending and the introduction of the new Strategic Defense Initiative, aka Star Wars. This missile system was designed to shoot down enemy rockets before they ever touched ground. Up until now, it was assumed that an attack by either country would result in the destruction of both. But with this new technology, the U.S. had a clear advantage, and it deeply concerned Soviet leaders, who became convinced an attack was coming. And the U.S. played on these fears, using so-called psychological operations. According to one former U.S. official, a squadron would fly straight at Soviet airspace, and their radars would light up and units go on alert. Then, at the last minute, the squadron would peel off and return home. America was waging a new kind of battle, a mental war, probing the Soviet defenses for weak points, provoking them, and constantly keeping them guessing. And it worked. The USSR became erratic, nervous, and started making mistakes. The Boeing 747 with 240 passengers and 29 crew was flying between New York and the Korean capital Seoul. First word something was amiss came when the jumbo disappeared off Japanese radar, west of the Soviet island of Sakhalin. As many as eight Soviet fighters tracked flight 007 for two and a half hours. At 18.26 hours, the Soviet pilot reported that he fired a missile 
and the target was destroyed. Fellow Americans, I'm coming before you tonight about the Korean Airline Massacre, the attack by the Soviet Union against 269 innocent men, women, and children aboard an unarmed Korean passenger plane. This crime against humanity... The USSR, in its paranoid state, had shot down a civilian plane, killing 269 passengers. Tensions between the two nations were reaching a boiling point, and innocent people were getting caught in the middle. But while the world was still taking in news of the tragedy, a crisis was brewing in that remote military base in Russia, right under the watch of Stanislav Petrov. And his decisions would impact everyone. We'll be right back. Here at Strange Archives, we spend a lot of time looking into the past. And the more we do, the more we see how history is shaped by all these little, important moments. With the election just around the corner, we have a rare chance to affect our future in a big way. You can still vote while staying safe from the pandemic at the same time by voting through the mail. It's really easy, I promise, I did it myself, but it can take a while for your ballot to be delivered, so you'll need to get on it. Request your ballot today, fill it out immediately, and return it right away. Go to strangevotes.org to request your ballot. Okay, back to the story. Lieutenant Colonel Petrov wasn't even scheduled to work this particular evening. He was covering for an ill co-worker and had accepted the shift at the last minute. Stranger still is that he didn't normally work at the command center. As a trained computer engineer, Petrov spent most of his time working through software glitches. But this night, he would come across a very different kind of glitch. 8 p.m. Petrov clocked into his 12-hour shift for what felt like just another night on the job. The control room was similar to what you might see in an old NASA video. Machinery steadily humming, rows of operators staring into dimly lit screens. That night, like every other, their job was to watch the sky for missiles. All those buzzing, humming screens were monitoring satellites over the U.S., and all the soldiers working at the command center were there to make sure that if the Americans attacked, they would be ready to respond. Just after midnight, without warning, an alarm erupted, shattering the calm evening. The screens lit up in bold letters, Zapuska, the Russian word for launch. According to the computers, the U.S. had just launched a nuclear missile. Everyone in the control center had trained for this moment. They knew they only had minutes to respond, and they knew that the consequences of their actions could be catastrophic. All eyes looked at Petrov, waiting for his orders. It's a false alarm, he thought and hoped, as he shouted commands, ordering the team to verify every piece of information. They double and triple checked, desperately looking for errors, but all signs pointed to normal. The system was functioning properly, no glitches detected. Petrov tried to appear calm, but he was terrified, and he said he felt like he was sitting in a hot frying pan. He became dizzy and couldn't feel his legs. He held a phone in one hand and a radio in the other, desperately absorbing the incoming information, holding on to a glimmer of hope that this was just a malfunction, not a war. A missile fired from the American Midwest could reach the USSR in 25 minutes, and Petrov had already spent 10. But protocol required 30 separate steps to confirm an enemy launch. So, with the weight of the world on their shoulders, the team began checking off steps, one by one. And as they did, the sirens began blaring again, telling that the U.S. had launched a second missile, headed towards Russia, then a third, a fourth, and a fifth. It was a horrible catch-22. Report a strike, start a nuclear war. Report a false alarm, risk losing that war. As the commanding officer, it was Petrov's responsibility to report the attack. But if he did, he knew that no one would question it, that once he gave the green light, it would start a chain of events that led to a devastating conclusion. But Petrov wasn't just another soldier. He was a computer engineer who had helped build the machines at the heart of the command center. To the average person, technology may seem infallibly correct, but the ones who built the technology know its limitations, and Petrov didn't have the same confidence in the warning systems that his fellow officers did. He suspected, somehow, that something was wrong. After all, if the U.S. was going to turn the Cold War hot, why would they do it with only five missiles, when they easily had enough to destroy the USSR ten times over? 
Finally, the 29th check was complete. Just one step left. Visual confirmation of the missiles. A rocket streaking through the night sky is an amazing and beautiful sight. One that's hard to miss. Yet, operators of the spy satellites saw no visual indication of a launch. Nor had any of the undercover agents in the American Midwest. The choice was up to Petrov, and time was running out. He had to make a decision. Thinking of the millions of lives at stake, and knowing it was a 50-50 chance of being right, the lieutenant colonel decided to wait. Either for the impact of a missile, or for assurance that this was in fact a false alarm. Six more tense minutes passed with no updates. No confirmation that he'd made the right choice. He could only wait and see if the gamble paid off. As the countdown ensued, no one spoke in the control room, but the clock kept ticking. And after six minutes were up, a sense of relief filled the room. If the U.S. had launched an attack, they would know it by now. But as Petrov had suspected, those missiles didn't exist. The alarms continued to blare in the control center. All else was silent throughout Russia that night. The satellites used to detect a launch made their calculations by watching the curvature of the planet. Any missile would appear silhouetted against the black background of space and be easily detected. However, as analysts later discovered, a rare solar flare caused sunlight over the U.S. to reflect off of clouds and into the satellite's lens, triggering the alarm. It was all one big glitch. Petrov's decisive inaction had paid off. But of course, no good deed goes unpunished. Though he was initially praised and promised a reward, it never came. The glitch embarrassed Soviet high command, and Petrov became a scapegoat. He was demoted, humiliated, and eventually suffered a nervous breakdown and left the military altogether. The former lieutenant colonel spent years in squalor, his pension cut back and his training useless as the Soviet Union collapsed. And the story of this averted apocalypse was closely guarded as a state secret until it was finally revealed after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Historian Taylor Downing wrote, By the time the first journalist got to Petrov, he was living a wretched life in a tower block of a Moscow suburb. But on the black and white television set in his tiny apartment, there was a small glass statue of a globe, inscribed with a few words from Kofi Annan the Secretary General of the United Nations, to Stanislav Petrov, the man who saved the world. Thank you for listening to this story from the Strange Archives. We'll have more episodes for you soon where we'll explore more weird, unknown, and crazy events that shaped our world. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast app to be the first to know when our next episode drops later this month. And if you like the show, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. I'm your host and producer, Charlie Garcia. This episode included research from Ricky Velez, Shiloh Williams, and Lauren Borders. Writing from Noor al Sabai, Elizabeth Frank, and Nayeli Paleo. Original music from Julian Blackmore. Strange Archives is a part of Progress Pop, a nonprofit news organization that reports on a wide range of national issues at the intersection of pop culture and current events.